In our next step, ideation, our goal is to generate as many ideas as possible. A word of caution, it's not about coming up with the right idea, it's about generating the broadest range of possibilities. Also, contrary to what most of us have experienced, brainstorming does not have to be a free-for-all action style where the prize goes to the loudest voice. To guide this process, I'll share two brainstorming techniques that can add structure, ignite possibilities, and challenge assumptions. The first one is the persona technique. This is where you will create types of users who are affected by your solution. Refer to your personas when developing solutions to problems to ensure that your ideas align with the user's needs and goals. Here are the steps for using the persona technique. Step one, start with a design challenge. Step two, create a persona, a fictional character that represents a particular user. Start with a persona that represents the user who is most affected by the design challenge. This person should include demographic information, behaviors, motivations, and pain points related to the problem or challenge. Step three, put yourself in your persona's shoes and add notes about the experiences, thoughts, and feelings you collected during empathy. Step four, generate ideas from each persona's perspective. Focusing on intentionally bad ideas first, we can reduce the barrier and spark breakthrough thinking. The second one is the worst idea technique. Here's how to use it. First, state your design challenge with your group and familiarize everyone with your criteria. Second, working as a group, make a list of 20 or more intentionally bad ideas. The worse, the better. Third, using your bad ideas as inspiration, try to turn each one into a relatively good idea. If possible, create one or more actual ideas from each bad idea. Stretch yourself. Are any of your bad ideas actually good? As you gather the ideas, you will see a pattern emerge. As a group, start identifying one or two of your most promising solutions to guide your next step of prototyping. Now that you have learned the different techniques, let's go back to Freedom Care's remote patient monitoring to see how they ideate it. Um, so what we wanted to do is uh, start looking at ways that we can potentially help them um, with clinical interventions, with programs that will actually improve their quality of life and improve their care. Um, so how I wanted to, that's an idea, but was that the right place to focus? And that's where we started looking at the, our own population, our own patients. Um, we started digitizing all the, the medical forms that qualified them for uh, their home care services. Then we started noticing trends. So then we uh, consulted with uh, some, some physicians and, uh, and clinicians and then found out that there's these ways that you can intervene on these to help them at an earlier stage before they deteriorate any further. Um, so that's where the idea of remote patient monitoring was really born, was looking at what the needs of the patients were, needs of the caregivers, listening to the phone calls, talking to them, looking at the population health data, seeing what the trends were for people that were of similar profiles and backgrounds, and then tying it to the mission, which is everybody deserves love, deserve to be loved and cared for. Um, it's really easy to come with the, up with ideas. Like the, nothing that we're creating is that innovative of a solution. Where we're trying to innovate is the process of execution and the reduction of friction for, with the patient's experience in mind. I think that's where we're really going to innovate on is reduce, increasing that access to care by reducing the friction to the, the understanding that care is ready at your fingertips. Uh, believe it or not, it wasn't that hard to, to kind of come up. It was just really to figure out what we want and then find what we want. There's a lot of innovation that's out there, but it's really tying this all together that's really difficult. Um, so for us, uh, that's how we started. We found that provider group um, in Tapestry. Then we found the cellular devices and a vendor that could provide those devices. Then uh, we brought on Rabia to train her to make those outbound calls. We wanted someone who, with care coordination experience and start 
uh, focusing on prioritizing the folks that had those condition ranges that the providers told us would be best fit for the remote patient monitoring program.